And what's more important to me is how can I protect my pancreas or my appendix from getting into trouble in the first place? Prevention is the best thing. That's the best thing that I find. That's the easiest way to stay healthy. So what are ways to protect the appendix? So I looked into that. Tomorrow at my regular channel, my main channel, which is Nancy Gurish, I'm going to be looking at and sharing with you what I'm going to do, what my contingency plan is. Was that the word? What my plan is in case I get the flu. I've made a video already speaking to what I did for a cold, and it actually it worked right away. It immediately worked, and that was the one tool that I had forgotten about in case I get the flu. So there are some tools that I'm going to keep in my tool box at home to help me in case I get the flu or a family member. And I'm going to share that tomorrow at my main channel. This is my spiritual walkway channel. And I like to share with you how I stay healthy in my spiritual sense at this channel. Sometimes I cross across the channels and share different things. I'm also going to share at my other channel is my techno channel. Very shortly, maybe today, I'm going to share about how a lot of my YouTube videos have gotten stolen. Somebody opened a YouTube channel and it's populated with all of my 50 of my videos. And I just found that out yesterday. So I found out what to do and I took steps to stop it, to put an end to it. So the appendix, I have my glasses on because I have dark circles and I believe that I've had dark circles for a long time. I'm so tired of hearing about my dark circles. <laughs> and until I get a better uh, correction stick, I'd like to keep them on. But I can't read close with these glasses. They're very, uh, they're for driving, you know. But I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to wear them. Okay, the appendix, it's about two to four inches long. And it's at the base of the, it's at the opening or the entrance of the large intestine. It's between the short, the small intestine and the large intestine. It's right there and it's small. The thing about the appendix is I discovered a lie or misinformation on the internet. And I want to add something in here. I want to clarify it because it's very, very important. I watched a video earlier this morning about Somebody in medicine who spoke to the appendix and said that it had that it had its purpose was having good bacteria, good flora in order to repopulate the colon. After something like diarrhea, it would repopulate the colon with good, healthy bacteria. And that's all that person spoke to with regard to the appendix. So I watched a more valuable video, somebody that we all love, know and love. His initials are EB, he's a doctor, and I watched his video about the appendix and I learned a lot in just his short two minute video. For one thing, the appendix is made of lymph tissue. It is comprised of lymph, t lymph tissue. And what that means is, is it makes antibodies. It actually produces white blood cells, which is antibodies for keeping the body healthy. That's a very important job and that's far more important than just knowing that it has the healthy bacteria it produces antibodies so it's a receptacle for antibodies <laughs> i'm going to take these off it's made of lymph tissue lymph tissue and it produces antibodies it's a sac about four inches off the da, da, da. it has it produces white blood cells and these help with infection okay so that's very important <sighs> I had my brain in all kinds of places where I didn't need it to be this morning. Do you ever go on YouTube and watch things that aren't good for your for your mind? And I also didn't I meant to rewrite this and didn't. And my writing is horrendous. That's my handwriting. Okay, there are a couple things that can help to protect the appendix. And what my first thought was is that anything that will help to protect the gallbladder, the liver, and the pancreas will no doubt be also helpful for the appendix. The age range where you most likely have to have treatment or have your appendix looked at or taken out is between the ages of 10 and 30. And most of the time, what I found out is it's, it's definitely poor food that causes us to have trouble with our appendices. And <laughs> I like that. Poor food, specifically sugar, okay? And lack of good 
healthy vegetable sources, which provide roughage for the body, which is, I got to turn that around. What helps it is having very good food, having eating good food, especially in particular vegetables, foods that are considered to be roughage, which would be the vegetable group and preferably we want to use organic vegetables whenever we can. There are two specific oils that can be used to protect the appendix and I'm going to tell you show you my source and I put I put a link for this book in the description. My husband brought this home to me this weekend. Amish folk medicine. Okay, this is I've learned a lot of the things that I know about how to stay healthy and how to treat at home for different situations from Amish sources and this is a book of that. And they have, they had a page for the appendix, and that was where I learned about the two oils that will help. I took the marker out. I got it. In, I got the marker in a page that helps with having a fish bone stuck in your throat. Oh, that would be horrible. Okay, so it's they've got an appendix in the front. This is written by a PhD, Patrick Bullen, a PhD RD. Okay, he's he's got a good. There's good articles. This has good chapters in it about the Amish community and the Amish lifestyle that were very interesting. The appendix is on page 55, how to protect our appendix. So this was the first place that I looked for help on this topic. Page 55. Okay, on page 55, the appendix, it talks about it being a small finger-like projection from the intestines, it's an active part of digestion in rabbits and other herbivores, but it's it's inactive in humans, which isn't true. But this would be old school knowledge about that. So it says here, um, one teaspoon of flaxseed daily may prevent problems with the appendix, or one teaspoon of olive oil daily may st help to prevent problems with the appendix. People on low fiber diets are more likely to develop appendicitis. It's the fiber. Okay, so that's cheap foods and people who don't eat good foods or healthy foods. But I thought it was interesting about the flaxseed and the olive oil. So I looked to find out what types of oils those are to find out what would what supplements would help. They're two different, they are two different in nature. Flaxseed is an omega-3 fatty acid and um, olive oil is has oleic acid and those were two things that I was looking for so I looked up good sources for that and I put them in the description of the video but I've looked up something else that has been of interest to me a question of mine that I've had for a long time and I had an answer that I believed responsible and reliable but I wanted to check it out is flaxseed good for men to take or not and I looked again briefly and I've come to the conclusion that no, it is not. So what would be good, a good supplement for men to take if they can't take flaxseed? And there's a, I put a flaxseed in the description of the video. I have a flaxseed that I really like. It's the brand that I really like and it's one of the, it's one that I very much like. So I put it in the um, video description box for you. So a teaspoon of that a day can be beneficial for women on many levels, flaxseed oil. It can help to balance out hormones and to protect our home hormones. And I also found out that it's an omega-3 fatty acid. So I put a supplement that I like of the brand that I like, which is the Now brand, for an omega-3, 6, and 9 that would be good for men to take as well. And olive oil, just taking olive oil every day, which if you use it on a regular and consistent basis, you're doing a good job to protect your appendix anyway. And I do use olive oil. Another thing that I would think would be greatly beneficial would be to beware of soybean oil and soybean products that aren't fermented soybean. And it's very hard, but I did find one brand of salad dressing that doesn't use soybean oil, even some of the best dressing, salad dressings, all include soybean oil. And I had taken that out of our diets completely when I had I had initiated the keto diet at home to help my husband with the problem that he had. And I have that video on my other channel. And we were successful in reversing that problem. 
And one of the one of the tools for helping to help our artery health is getting rid of all soy products. And so I made my own salad dressing for a short while and they're really good and they're not that complicated to make. There was only one salad dressing that I was able to find and it's something called Kitchen. The brand name was Kitchen something or other. And if I ever get that online, a source, I'll probably make a web page about that. My web magazine is called Your Health and Tech Friend. It's an internet magazine. And that's where I post these videos and I post any information that I want to share there. Okay. A good, what have I got written here? The two types of oil and having foods that are known to have a roughage effect better quality vegetables and foods. I'm going to see if there's anything more I wrote about that. They said that also that the appendix can get, the appendix can get clogged up with debris. And I have one story to share about that. I have a, a good friend. She's passed away now, but when she was a young kid, I would say 12, 10 or 11, 10 to 12 years old, she had her appendix taken out and she had two habits that her mom tried to always stop her from doing. One was chewing on her hair. If you ever known a girl who pulls their hair in front of their face and then chews on their hair, she did that. And her mom always told her not to do that. And when she ate watermelon, she would swallow the seeds. And they always told her not to do that also. She, her appendix got in trouble. She had trouble with it. And the doctor said that when he took it out, he said, he said that I wanted to make sure of something. When he took the appendix out, he said it was wrapped in hair and watermelon seeds. And I didn't know if I believed that as I was, when she shared that with me and I was in my twenties or so, I didn't know if I really believed it. I thought maybe they told her that because she did that, but probably it might have because it's a receptacle for debris. So not doing, not chewing your hair and not swallowing watermelon seeds is probably a good thing. All right. Okay. For men, as well as for women, if you don't want to take flaxseed or if you don't want to buy an omega-3, 6, and 9 supplement, the foods that will help are fish. If you don't have fish regularly in your diet, that is when it's said that you may want to supplement with some type of an oil vitamin. The fish that are most high in these oils, in the good oils, omega-3, is mackerel, which I have never had the occasion to buy, salmon, everyone loves salmon, and you know you need to buy wild-caught and not farm-raised, and cod liver oil. So those three oils, again, are mackerel, salmon, and cod liver oil. Cod liver oil comes in a capsule form because I know it's not pleasant or easy to take. So I wrote that down. So that would be good. And I think yeah, I would like to survive life, go to the end of my days without needing to get my appendix taken out and without having troubles. It's a pain that starts in the navel and moves over to the abdomen, something along those lines. And that's it for the appendix today. I accidentally posted this video announcement at my main channel today. Actually, tomorrow at my main channel called Nancy Gurish, it's going to be what I'm going to do in case the flu comes into my house this year because I don't believe in getting any type of protection along those lines. I've never done that, and I don't want to start now. I think that's it, Buttercups. Peace.